there is no such thing as the perfect classroom management system or the classroom management system that means you won't have any disruptions or any problems or any whatever. That's just the nature of being in a very relational profession. But I think it helps sometimes to still talk about the strategies that actually worked. And so I want to talk about one particular thing that I started doing pretty early on in teaching that turned out to be really helpful for me. And it's the idea of procedures and one specific way of teaching them to students, a way that empowers them and brings them into the entire process. So here it is. The process starts out like this. Students have a sticky note and they write any question that they have about what they are allowed to do or not allowed to do in the classroom. And typically these are things like, uh, can I sharpen my pencil? Can I throw something in the trash? Am I allowed to get up to use the restroom? And so on and so forth. And then they hand me the sticky notes and we kind of start combining ones that are similar. And I bring the students into this process as well. From there, we take the most common questions and we put them into this procedure grid. And the procedure grid uh, also divides up all the groupings that we have. So individual, partner, small group, and whole class. From there, we collectively come up with the general procedures with a strong focus on the rationale. Most of the classes agree that, for the most part, if you're doing partner work, you shouldn't have headphones on. And you shouldn't have headphones on when you're doing uh, direct instruction and you're supposed to be listening to the teacher. But for individual work, headphones are totally fine. You can have headphones. And so we go through this process where we decide when you're allowed to do something and when you're not allowed to do something. It's collective, it's democratic, and it's different. But the other thing is the students end up with a strong rationale for the specific procedures that we have in class. They know not only what they're allowed to do, but they're also able to figure out why. It's less like a set of rules and more like a description of how something works. These are the systems we have in our classroom. And because of that, the students generally feel empowered and they have a sense of ownership. And the crazy thing is that happens on day one. By day five, things are just working that way. And by day seven or eight, that procedure grade isn't even hanging up in the classroom anymore. And it's just a normal part of the general class procedures and norms and expectations of how things work. I will say this, it's sometimes confusing for new students. So I would typically type it up, print it, and hand that grid to new students when they came in. And again, it was amazing how quickly they could figure it out. It was like a cheat sheet for the way things work in a classroom. Anyway, I'm hoping you find this helpful and I'm hoping it can be something that you can use in your own classroom. And feel free to modify it, adjust it, Figure out what works for you.